Well, uh, my name is Esteban, and today I will be talking about uh, hacking and protecting Oracle databases, database vault. This is the outline of uh, this presentation. First, uh, we are going to see an introduction to Oracle database vault. Uh, this is a uh, quite a new topic for this kind of conferences, so I will be doing a, an introduction of what is uh, Oracle Database Vault, uh, what changes it introduces, and what are its elements. Then we're going to move to the most important part of this presentation, that are the attacks against Oracle Database Vault. Uh, we're going to see attacks that will uh, look for operating system access in order to be able to compromise uh, Oracle Database Vault and the Oracle Database. Uh, we are going to see uh, how to impersonate the Maxis user that is the most important user in Oracle Database Vault, is the Database Vault owner user. Then we are going to see uh, some special considerations for the sys user and how we can compromise Oracle Database Vault uh, using SQL injection vulnerabilities in the sys schema. After that, we are going to see uh, some issues with uh, native database auditing uh, with the sys user. Finally, we are going to see some additional protections and some conclusions. Well, what, what is uh, Oracle Database Vault? It's important to know that it's an add-on to Oracle Database. Uh, it's not installed by default. It's installed uh, mainly to add uh, security features that uh, doesn't have the database and that are required, for example, for strict regulations such as Servants Oxley or PCI that uh, calls for a separation of duty, a strict separation of duty inside the database. So Oracle Database Vault will allow for a separation in a activities such as account management, database resource management, and data security. It's, uh, this this add-on product uh, protects uh, against attacks that can be done by highly privileged users, such as database administration administrators. So uh, now the DBA doesn't have the unlimited access to database data. After we install this uh, add-on product, uh, there are some changes in the configuration of uh, the database instance. The, mo uh, the, the first thing that uh, you can notice is that uh, initialization parameters are changed to more secure values. This is uh, documented in the Oracle Database Vault documentation. The recycle bin feature is disabled some uh, privileges are uh, removed from default Oracle roles like DBA role uh, because some of these uh, privileges could lead to the compromise of database vault uh, security features. Also, the database uh, native audit is configured to include more uh, actions, but actually the, the auditing is not enabled. Also, there are, there are some uh, architectural changes, like the dollar table is moved to the system schema and instead of the sys schema. Well, but all these uh, changes are not, uh, that doesn't uh, add any security feature. It, it, sh it can be done just by any database administrator to any database instant. What uh, are important changes are some protections that are uh, added. For example, uh, there are some schemas that are protected uh, by default with uh, Realm. We are going to see uh, later what is uh, Realm. So the sys and system schema are protected. 
as well as some uh, sensitive commands like the commands that uh, can uh, that uh, that are related to account management for example create user alter user etc so all these changes are incompatible with the some operations of the database like installing patches so it is uh, required to disable database vault when we uh, want to install patches oracle documentations state uh, how how to disable Oracle Database Vault in order to install the patches. And that is uh, what is found in the documentation for Windows. We can rename a DLL file. And on Linux and Unix systems, we, can ex we should execute a couple of commands to disable Database Vault. There are some other changes that all the releases uh, that were in place in all the releases, like the operating system authentication to the database uh, disabled, and that uh, login with sysdba privileges were blocked. This, of course, uh, had a lot of problems and incompatibilities with uh, some of the tools, like uh, Arman and some other Oracle command line utilities. But there is a parameter in Oracle PWD tool to enable the CDBA DBA access as well as overwrite the uh, sys password. So as you can see, if we have operating system access as the Oracle user, we uh, are able to First, uh, we are able to disable database vault, and also we, we can uh, override and enable the sysdba access. Well, n now let's see what are the elements that are provided by database vault to, that uh, one can use to secure uh, further the database. The most important concept probably uh, are the realms that uh, are a functional grouping of database schemas and roles uh, that we want to secure, for example, when they are related to accounting or employees. So you can use uh, a realm to control the use of the system privileges to a specific account or role that are uh, part of this realm. So uh, we, even if we have for example, uh, select any table privilege or update any table privilege, we won't be able to access an object that is protected by a realm. Then we also have the factors that uh, are named uh, variables or attributes, such as IP addresses, user locations, or use, uh, session usernames. Uh, these uh, factors can be used to control the access to the database. Uh, this can be uh, used to provide protections against application bypass, or ad hoc uh, database access. Then we also have some other uh, concepts that uh, uh, we can use to, to further protect the database. Also, there are some uh, schemas that are in installed when we uh, apply this, this, when we install this add-on database vault product. Uh, the most important one is DVCs that contains all the database vault objects, such as the tables, views, and PLSQL packages that uh, we can use to administer and configure the database vault installation. This uh, schema, of course, is protected by a realm so that uh, administrators can't access it. The DBF schema, that is also part of Database Vault, is uh, used to, uh, for retrieve, to retrieve factor identities. It has functions to retrieve IP address, session username, etc. There are some uh, roles that are provided by Oracle Database Vault 
that uh, we can use to give the necessary ad authorization to administer or to use database vault the most important role or the, or the most full privileged role is DB owner and we also have a DB realm owner that is the a, an owner of a realm but DB owner is the owner of all the database vault so it's the the most privileged user then we have a DB account manager that uh, is used to for account managing it can uh, create users or alter user passwords. Then we have DB sec analyst that uh, is a role that allows to exec to run uh, reports of database vault. There are some uh, users that are created when we install the database vault. This is uh, asked that the user is asked for the usernames and password when. Uh, one is, is installing database vault. So actually the, the usernames in a installation can be different than the ones that I use here in the presentation, but uh, these names are the ones that are used uh, through the documentation. So we have an account for the, the Mac account that is the account uh, responsible for the administration of database account. We must use this account to create or manage uh, users. And uh, then an, another important user is the Maxis user. That is the, as I said before, is the, the, the database vault owner. So it has uh, permissions over the database vault realm. That is the one that protects the DVC schema that, that contains all the, the database objects of database vault. Well, there are some uh, security considerations that are documented. Uh, here I uh, enumerate a few. Uh, this presentation is not going to focus on these uh, documented uh, considerations. There are some considerations with PSQL packages, such as UTL file. One can imagine that this is because uh, this can uh, provide file system access to anyone that uh, has uh, access to these PSQL packages. Also, it is documented that there, there are some privileges that can lead to the compromise of database vault, such as the one that, with, that are related to shop management, the recycle bin, and the external procedures. And there are also some trusted accounts that uh, must be secured. The, the documentation said that uh, the Oracle software owner and the SysDBA users uh, are uh, accounts that must be uh, trusted. Well, now let's see uh, what are the attacks that uh, we are going, that uh, we can do to compromise the database vault First, uh, there are the operating systems attacks, the attacks that will look for operating system access, uh, being a user connected uh, to the database. So we're going to see some examples of this. this. Uh, also, we are going to see that uh, it, it is possible with a couple of system privileges to create and execute a procedure in the Maxis schema and uh, impersonate the Maxis user. Uh, we, we are going to see that the Sys user can bypass the database vault, and we are going to see that impersonating the Sys user uh, through sequence injection, we can uh, compromise the database vault. Also, uh, we are going uh, to to see some vulnerabilities that are specific to database vault. Well, let's see uh, some ways to get operating system access uh, through the database. This uh, operating system access 
as the Oracle software or owner or as root or administrator user in Windows uh, allows an attacker to disable database vault and additionally to overwrite the sys password and enable the CTBA connections if uh, they are disabled. There are many ways in, in which an attacker could uh, get operating system access. There is the, the external procedure call method. We, we are going, the following example is uh, about this method. We are going to see also that uh, exploiting a buffer overflow vulnerability can allow uh, for operating system access and the disable of database vault. Also, it is possible to use uh, Java store procedures to get operating system access and also through external shops and creating a directory object uh, could, could also uh, lead to file system access and uh, the compromise of database vault. In addition, if we don't have the required privileges to perform this kind of attacks, we can use SQL injection vulnerabilities and use one of, of these attacks. Well, let's see now uh, in the first example uh, with the demonstration, the, the method using an external procedure call. An external procedure is a procedure that is stored in an out in a dynamic link library, uh, in a, a function in a dynamic link library. So we first need to create a library of objects on the database that points to an external DLL file. And then uh, we create a procedure that points to a function in that uh, library. So there, there are uh, some restrictions. In Oracle, we can't uh, load libraries that are outside the Oracle Home lib directory in Linux and Oracle Home bin directory in Windows. But uh, I found that there, there are uh, interesting libraries in those directories that uh, can uh, lead to execute operating system commands. So we have, for Windows, we have the Visual C runtime library that has the system function to execute operating system commands. And also there is another library in Linux, the libos utils library that has an exec function to execute operating system commands. So to perform this attack, we need to privileges, the create library and create procedure privileges. We, entons, we just uh, need first to create the library object inside the database. This is done uh, with the create library statement. There are uh, the examples for Linux and Windows. After we create the library object, we have to create the procedure that uh, points to an exported function in that uh, library. So here I, I create a procedure that uh, points to the system function. And now I can use this OS exec to pr store procedure inside a PLSQL program to execute the operating system command I pass as a parameter. So after uh, I execute this to create library and create procedure statements, I can execute operating system commands uh, as the Oracle user or system authority in Windows. So to disable database vault, we can uh, execute these two statements that are the ones that uh, you execute to disable database vault. And for Windows, we can uh, execute this, any of these two statements. It is different if we are talking about Oracle 10G or Oracle 11G, because the, the name has the name, the DLL file name has the release 
version in its name. So let, let's see an example. Let's see the a demonstration. This uh, SQL script contains the statements that uh, I just show you. So we create a test user and grant create session, create procedure, and create library privileges. So this, this user doesn't have any database vault role granted, so it shouldn't uh, be able to disable database vault or compromise database vault in any way. After I create the user, I create the library, the store procedure, and then call the this uh, the, the, the the store procedures that I just created to rename the DLL file. Look that we can use this the environment variable, so we even didn't need to know where the Oracle home is located. So let, let's see. Let's execute this. This is this VM has Oracle 11 she installed with DB Vault. Let's see first how the protections works. Let's uh, suppose we want to protect the HR schema. I will connect as system that is a DBA user and select from that schema and uh, I will get all the results because the HR schema is not protected yet. But I will create now a realm to protect this schema with these statements. I connect as the database vault owner user and then create a realm. I give it a name. Then out, I an out, authorized user for this realm, the HR user. Then I will say that it must protect the HR schema and all its objects in this schema and gives a, a description of the realm. So after I create this realm, I will no longer be able to select from any table, even if I am a database administrator, I will get insufficient privileges error. But let's now disable database vault using this exploit. We are going to see here is the here is the DLL. It's just got rename it with an un underscore. So the next time the, the Oracle uh, instant is started, Oracle Database Vault will be disabled. I will restart the instance and check again if now I can access the HR schema. Well, it will, uh, let's continue. It will take a bit to restart the instance. So there are a couple of things that we can do to protect against uh, this attack. First, we can uh, avoid uh, granting the create library and create procedure privileges to user, especially the create library privileges. That is the one that allows to associate a, a database library to an external dynamic link library, or at least uh, enable these privileges just for the period of time that is uh, needed. 
Also, there is uh, an interesting setting in listen error file. The exproct DLLs setting uh, can be used to restrict what libraries can be loaded. So we can just uh, name there the DLL files that uh, we know are secure and that we, our applications uh, need. And uh, no other uh, DLL files uh, will be able to, to be loaded. Let's see, it is still st uh, restarting the database. So we, we are uh, next uh, attack example that uh, will get uh, operating system access is the Java attack. There are uh, two approaches that I will be showing today. One that uh, doesn't require uh, special privileges and uh, it uses the vulnerabilities uh, discovered by David Litchfield uh, this year and that are fixed in April 2010 CPU. Or, uh, or another uh, way to do it is that uh, using the functionality that is available to uh, privileged users. The, the privileged users that, uh, that uh, Database Vault is supposed to protect from. Well, the database uh, was restarted. Let's see now if the protections are still in place. I will connect a system and try to select from the HR. And as you can see now, I can select from the HR schema so uh, Oracle Database Vault uh, was disabled. Let's uh, enable it again so we can continue our demonstrations. Well, so there, there are basically two steps uh, to for this attack, for this uh, attack that will use the Oracle Java functionality in Oracle to get uh, operating system access. First, we need to grant the Java privileges that are required to access operating system resources. Uh, this can be done with uh, in two ways. One is using the grant permissions store procedure, but uh, this one requires the Java admin role. This is the like the official or documented way to do it. Or we can use the import JV JVM perms store procedure that uh, are the ones that are with the Oracle Java vulnerabilities fixed in April 2010 CPU. So this, this uh, method doesn't require any privileges because this store procedure can be called by uh, any user. Then after we have the required Java privileges, we, can, we should uh, create uh, the Java store procedure that uh, will contain the Java instructions to execute an operating system commands. These uh, Java instructions are uh, the standard uh, Java for execute an operating system commands that will use the Java functionality to do that. Or we can use, instead of create this uh, Java store procedure, we can call an existing uh, Java class that uh, Oracle had, the Oracle Aurora Util Wrapper class that contained a, a function to uh, execute operating system commands. This one uh, are not available if we have April 2010 CPU applied. So let's first see an example of uh, using the, we, we, if we want the Java admin role, so we can use these uh, statements to grant the necessary Java privileges with these statements. 
Here I uh, grant the, the, the necessary permissions to the one DBA user. After that, I create a Java source that will take uh, one argument. That is the command that we want to execute. And then create a Java store procedure that uh, will call this uh, Java method. So we can use it uh, in, in a PLSQL standard program. So we, can, we could execute this, this statement to overwrite the sys password as any pass and to enable sysdba access or we can use this other statement to rename the GLL file to disable database vault. Let's see how it works. Well, this script contains the, the same instructions we just seen in the slides. So we have the DLL file with the correct name. We are going to execute the exploit. and we will see that the uh, DLL file will be renamed. Well, the, the way to to defend from this attack is uh, to restrict the Java admin role, that is the role that uh, is needed to grant the Java permissions needed to access operating system resources, or to remove the Java support uh, from Oracle database if we don't uh, need it. Let's see if, well, as we can see now, the. DLL files has an underscore, so it's uh, the the database vault will be disabled. So we, we were able to disable database vault having the Java admin uh, role. Let's see now a way to do this with uh, no privileges. It, it is needed just these uh, two statements. The first one gives the necessary permissions, grant the necessary, necessary permissions to the user that is exploiting this uh, vulnerability. And then we just uh, use this, this function to call the Oracle Aurora Util Wrapper class, the main uh, method in that class, and we uh, just execute the operating system, pass as, as argument the operating system command we want to execute. Yeah, no, no, ju I will just uh, uh, show that it gets renamed. I won't restart and start it again. So the, the DLL now has the correct name after I execute this exploit. We can see that the DLL file got renamed.
So to defend uh, from this attack, uh, the one that uh, doesn't use any privileges, uh, we should apply the April 2010 CPU that uh, fixes the Java vulnerabilities that allow to grant the Java permissions, uh, even if we are not, we don't have the Java domain role granted. And uh, or we could uh, remove, revoke the privileges from the this DVMS JVM XPerms package that uh, is the one that is used to grant the Java privileges. Well, let's see now uh, an example uh, how we can uh, get operating system access and uh, disable the database vault with a buffer overflow attack. This uh, buffer overflow is in a store procedure, so we need uh, execute per permissions on a vulnerable store procedure. Well, this is the, the exploit. I won't enter much in, into detail. The vulnerable parameter is the dir path uh, parameter. So when the buffer overflows, the EBX register points to the start of this dir path buffer. So here I uh, enter the instructions that I want to execute that basically are the, a call to the system function of C runtime library and then the function so that the threads end and there are no exceptions thrown after it continues with the execution. Let's see how it works. I will use uh, Tenshi release 2 uh, Oracle because this uh, vulnerability is in, in that release. So we have uh, the, the DLL file with the correct name. And as we can see, the file got renamed with an underscore. So now the database vault is disabled. Well, to defend from these uh, buffer overflow attacks, uh, Oracle fixes these uh, buffer overflow attacks, the one that uh, reporters, that researchers reports to them or the ones that they uh, found internally with critical patch updates so uh, we can uh, apply CPUs to to be uh, to be protected from known buffer overflow vulnerabilities also it's important to reduce the attack surface so we should restrict the execute permissions on packages because there are a uh, a lot of packages with buffer overflow vulnerabilities. Let's move now to the impersonating Maxis attack. This one uh, requires create any procedure and execute any procedure privileges. So uh, it basically has two step two steps. First one is to create a procedure in the Maxis schema and then we just execute uh, this uh, procedure which which has created as uh, we know the oracle 
by default executes the store procedures with the privileges of the owner of the schema. So uh, if we create, if we are able to create a store procedure in the Maxis schema, we can execute uh, statements as this uh, Maxis user. Here is the example. We just uh, prefix the store procedure with the Maxis schema name. So this uh, procedure takes a statement as an argument and executes it. After we have uh, this statement, uh, this uh, procedure created, we can uh, call it and with a, with a, a SQL statement as its parameter and it will be executed as, as the Maxis user. Let's see. So here the script first uh, create a, a test user and grant the required privileges to, to exploit uh, this problem. We then connect as this user and create the store procedure in the Maxis schema and then call it to change the password of the Maxis user. As we are impersonating the Maxis user, we are able to do this. If we are not a uh, Maxis user, even if we are DBAs, we can't uh, change its password. And then I'm going to show that you can now connect as Maxis with this uh, new password. Well, as we can see, here first I connect here. Here I can connect now with the Maxis any password use, uh, any, any PSW password. Well, there are a couple of things we can do to protect from these attacks. Uh, first, we can restrict the privileges that are needed to perform this attack that are the create any procedure and execute any procedure privileges. We should consider also to protect the max six schema with a realm. We can do that by executing those uh, SQL statements. If we are, if we have the Maxis schema protected, then uh, we, even if we have the create any procedure privileges, we can compromise the Maxis schema because it is protected with the realm. Well, there are some uh, considerations that are documented uh, for the sys user. But uh, it actually the documentation doesn't say much about uh, how how the sys user can compromise. So I researched it a bit and found that uh, it can compromise using this parse as user store procedure that can impersonate the Maxis user. So we can alter the Maxis password and uh, also in other releases uh, the Maxis user can can do some other things like directly like directly update all the the data dictionary tables so for example we can if we are the sys user we could update the maxis password using this statement or we can grant the db owner role in uh, adding a role in the sys auth dollar table So uh, what about a SQL injection in sys schema? If we can impersonate the sys user using SQL injection, we uh, can use some of the techniques I just mentioned to uh, compromise database vault. Uh, 
Here is, for example, uh, how we can do it with this uh, vulnerability that allows to execute uh, statements as the sys user. So we impersonate the max sys user with this parse as user function. And then, uh, after we have impersonated the max sys user, we grant the DV owner to any user. This is another example. Uh, here, uh, this uh, SQL injection vulnerability allows to inject a function call. So I will need to create an auxiliary function that uh, will contain all the statements that I will uh, that I want to execute as the sys user. Here, I, as I use another of the ways to impersonate the max sys user, and after impersonating it changing its password. Well, a Carson injection can be used in this case. This, uh, this one is another example using a SQL injection vulnerability. But this time, I will uh, insert directly a row in the data dictionary internal table. This one is the same as uh, doing a grant DV owner uh, statement, but I just update uh, directly the data dictionary uh, table. Of course, if I execute here a grant DV owner statement, it won't work because the 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 database vault protections are uh, in place. Even if you are the sys user, you can't uh, issue a grant statement. But doing this uh, ab direct update of tables, you are able to, to grant the DB owner role. Well, this is a, a further analysis of the, the, the SQL injection vulnerability that I just uh, we just saw to see if we can exploit it without the need of a, an auxiliary function. We don't have too much time to enter into detail, but uh, here I select from the V$ SQL text table to see what are the SQL statements that have been executed from the SGA Oracle memory. So I see where exactly the vulnerability is. Here in green, I can see that the parameter I, uh, I insert is, is, here, is used here. So as we can see, there is a begin and an end. So we can just uh, close this uh, store procedure call with a parenthesis. And uh, with a semicolon, we could add other uh, statements without ne the need of uh, calling uh, an auxiliary function. So here is how we could exploit this in a more uh, simple way. And this is the statement that uh, gets ex executed as sys. I uh, wrote a white paper, so if you want to see more how this works, probably you, you could uh, read it as uh, we don't have too much time. Also, uh, there are some uh, vulnerabilities uh, more specific to the database vault implementation, because uh, actually the ones we've just saw uh, take advantages of the functionality that the Oracle database provides to, to be able to compromise database vault, but there are also some vulnerabilities specific to database vault one that was fixed some time ago that uh, when we changed the language session parameter to anything different that, uh, than American, the database vault realm protections for DDL statements didn't work. And there are also some uh, pending fixes that I, I reported uh, to them and they are uh, going to fix 
Well, this is uh, like a similar subject, but not directly related to database vault. There are some issues with the sys user auditing. As it is documented, the sys user uh, is audited in a different way than regular users. They are, uh, all the statements that we execute as the sys user are audited in, in the, with the SQL text as we enter them. So for example, if we call a store procedure as sys, we don't uh, see all the, we just see the exec store, store procedure and we don't see all the uh, things that the store procedure executes. So what about uh, SQL injection running as sys? If we uh, can exploit a SQL injection that is in the sys schema, we uh, could execute statements without paint uh, audited. Well, there are some uh, additional protection measures that we can take. Uh, first, restrict the system privileges that can lead to full database compromise and the compromise of database vault, the become user and those other privileges mentioned there. This uh, SQL statement can be used to retrieve all the users and roles that uh, have these uh, dangerous system privileges granted. We should uh, take into consideration that uh, we should never use the default Oracle users or roles. It uh, generally contains a lot of system privileges and they may change over time. We should uh, create our own roles and grant the roles that uh, the, the, the privileges that we know that uh, are needed for the job. But that there is also a way to change the external job operating system user if we change it to a low privileged user and not the Oracle or system user, we can uh, protect uh, that if we create a job over the system, in an external job, uh, we can't uh, access the, this DLL file or execute the commands to disable the database vault. Well, some conclusions, uh, we, have, we just saw the separation of duty that is provided by Oracle Database Vault uh, can be bypassed. There are some system privileges that can lead to full compromise of the Database Vault installation. Uh, as, we can, as we have seen, the, if we uh, find and exploit a vulnerability, a SQL injection vulnerability in the sys schema, uh, we are able to execute as uh, sys SQL statements as sys and uh, we can compromise database vault or even execute SQL statements without being audited. So I think that Oracle should move out of the sys schema uh, much of the functionality and use uh, only the sys schema for the core uh, and most important uh, part of the database. Also, I have uh, been studying Oracle Database Vault for a while and I have seen that uh, the, its security is improving. It's also easier to use. It has uh, more restrictions for the sys user. There are more uh, tools that uh, are compatible with Database Vault. So these are uh, positive uh, things. Well, in the in the white paper, you can find some more uh, references and information. Uh, so that's it. If uh, we want to...